Hi folks, second one for you today. I did this oil painting some months ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's quite heavy, but I want to do something like that. It's, it, it's an abstract of my local river wandle. Uh, but it could be anywhere. But using a lot of nice uh, black and yellow for these greens. Well, I want to do a sunset uh, over over a river, so I'll uh, I'll work from this one. See how we go. Uh, there's, there are my colours for today. We've got uh, cadmium yellow, pale, medium, deep yellow ochre, orange, uh, alizarin, cadmium red, ultramarine, black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and viridian rather a lot of colours there. I, I don't usually use, well I won't use them all, but if I do, great. But I think if you're inexperienced you'll f uh, find that um, the more colours you have the more confusion you will have as well. So I do recommend a uh, a limited palette, so five, six colours, which I would normally use, but uh, because I'm using black, I want to get a variety of greens, and I've got Viridian, that makes a lovely range of bright greens. Uh, I'm using the my new half gallon plastic container of uh, Agri Vets Gel. It's a very, very good medium. It's not meant. It was never meant for human or animal, well, meant for animal use for a lubricant it's similar to the stuff they plaster on, our, on your stomach when you go for ultrasound but it's a, a, a veterinary grade rather than a human grade so I'll put in a try and put in a, a, a well I don't know I, I might change my mind I might do a uh, abstract -y sort of sky which I will I will put a bit of a sunset in it as well. So blue and a burnt umber, but a burnt umber and ultramarine gives it a very nice dark. So we'll uh, work on with that. Use a lot of the old gel in this at this stage. Burnt umber is a, a, an ultramarine, a good grey mix, get a nice dark grey with them. So I'm using plenty of gel just to get it all nice and lubricated here, ready for the ultrasound. If you want to, sh to, to show light you've got to uh, put it against light, so that's why I'm putting a nice dark. So I've already changed my mind about what I'm going to do. We'll let that dry a minute. We'll, we'll uh, go in with um, <coughs> some uh, trees. Well, oh, we'll have a bit of river. Let's a uh, bit of ochre, bit of uh, orange, and we'll. Uh, just to remind me what we're, where we're going here. Low horizon, so this just bit of river. Right, give that a nice clean. Keep your brushes very clean because acrylic will dry quite quickly. But the, the gel does slow the drying time quite considerably so I can't work in there yet 
But if I, I, I'm not going to paint big trees like in my painting there, the one I just shown you. I'm going to, uh, well, let's get some nice, nice greens, black, red, yellow. And I'll, I'll, I'll paint down to those when the sky's a bit dry. So plenty of, plenty of colour. I like to mix red in with, uh, with all this. Get an olive green, so we'll have the, the bank there. Can be red, plenty of yellow. And we'll uh, I'm sort of painting the wonder of my river from memory here, let's just have a bit of, bit of background. I'm using this uh, graduate Dale Rowney brush of £2.50, it's a, it's a number 10, it's about half an inch I suppose, half inch, probably slightly more, five eighths, so it's called a bright, but I call it a, a short flat. But for £2.50 yeah, from the range, I think it's a very, very good, uh, the range being a, a superstore nearby. <sighs> I can't go into this guy until it's, it's, it's sort of dry, but look how, if that had been uh, using PVA glue or something else, another retarder, maybe it would still be, uh, it would dry. But the light is shining through from the back, which is fine. So we'll, we'll thicken up a bit. But I want this to be a, a, um, quite a, a sunsetty, heavy, heavy sky coming in. So black and blue. More blue, I think, than the... Than the I, I, I see things, uh, other paintings, you get, the, the, just the trouble, you, it gives you uh, ideas by looking somewhere else, but you can't copy, you, you've got to do your own thing with it, otherwise it's pretty obvious that you've, you've nicked it from someone else. Get all cover, cover all that background. I'll put a bit of black with that shortcut. Now we've got some nice dark to uh, to paint into. Okay, let's go in with with some banks. Light in there just to. Uh, I'll put some shadows in the bank and keep it nice and soft. That's quite brilliant on my screen, but it's not really in this sort of pathway down here and just a tangle of, tangle of bramble. So let's uh, put that in a bit of red, a bit of black.
black, green, I mean yellow, red, I want a bit of blue in that background. Right, now let's so go in and put a bit of bit of that. Uh, sunsets. So we've got this orange so we'll use it. I'll use it with a nice yellow, a bit of white. I'm using a st my Stay Wet palette that I keep the watercolours in, which I'm now in a bag, the Ziploc bag, hopefully keeping moist. Yeah, you can see that there's a got in here, a little bit of towel, and I can see all the moisture underneath in the plastic, so they're keeping nice and soft for when I get back to two watercolours, which I will do soon, but I'm really enjoying my acrylic painting at the moment. I'm having great, great fun with it. A bit of red in there. Compare the dark up into that. Now don't paint the shapes round your trees. We're doing a reflection here. Oh, bum. excuse me, in my language. I've sullied my brush. Well, you have to be very careful when you're working in quite a restricted area. Well, oh, I've not had a good day today. So I'll take it out of my easel and I kick it. Oh, no, it's the camera. It takes ages to get in the right position. Right, okay, that's it. So, so I want a darker, darker red. Put a little one, a bit of white, a bit of blue. Still damp. That's okay. We'll go back to that when it's a bit drier. That's the lovely thing about this 
gel, it holds things moist for some minutes. The uh, acrylic um, PVA glue diluted would uh, was okay, but it uh, it um, it still still dried pretty quick. So now we're going to get some nice uh, clash in there. So let's. Uh, thinking oh, well, I've got to do this silhouette really nice black red and yellow just to preserve that counter change no oh, it's raining again so much for summer, eh? In the UK, it's uh, we had a couple of lovely days last weekend before last in the 80s, but now ever since it's been in the doldrums. Black, yellow, red. Oh, lovely and dark. I'll put some highlights on some of that before we get to it. Let's do some work on the left hand side, then I'll go into the foreground, a bit of the river, and then we'll work on the sky when it's dry. <coughs> it's, look, um, it's looking okay, it's, it's promising. Over my blue, there. It's, it's a nice bit of uh, bit of light there. It's building up an impasto. So I want to get a nice sort of impressionist feel to this. Shadow is dark in there. I'll go over that with blue when I'm ready. A nice, nice bit of dark red in there. Along here, you've got um, all the uh, brambles. Elder, elder flower. Highlight silhouette. That's nice, nice impasto there. Give, giving some high spots. Now, I don't know why I've done that, but I'm going to put more of that dark around it and blend it all in. But we're just putting colours on it at the moment. Uh, now, let's uh, texture some of this here, a bit of, bit of ochre, a bit of cajello, a bit of viridian, get some bit of orange, carry the orange through here. They put some nice lights. Um, light and dark shadows in, well, dark shadows in, in here. But I'm painting the light first.
Now we've done one uh, painting today. Put the orangey colour in there. Let's get the shadow now, coming through here, so you've got, you've got the shadow, so dark green. So black and yellow and red, but more yellow. And so that we can... So the, the banks are not black or mauve, they're, they're, they're dark green, but they're not reflecting the light. Well, well there isn't any light, the sh shadow is coming up here. I'm going to just drag a little bit down like that in the water. Now let's try quick because I didn't use any gel. <coughs> now we can put in a bit of, bit of a blue shadow. Not sure I like that, that's just all wet. But uh, it's, it's blue and it'll give a cooler feel to things going off into that distance. Got to be careful, my brush is just going to dry with paint now. How are we doing there? Oh, no, it's still wet. I want to sort of shape the trees with the, with the sky. That'll be a sort of a negative, negative shape. All right, let's get in some uh, shadow down here now. Blue, I mean black, red, yellow, dark green. But you won't see so much of this, the shadow here. That's where you'll you'll see it. Oh gosh, no. every all the noise is going off now. But I've got the wind open. It's, it's, it's not cold. It's just miserable. I can't even get out to do my barbecue. It's missing a bit of blue and a bit of red here. I'm trying to make this sort of more abstract than uh, representational or impressionist even. Put a bit of light on that uh, in here. Now we cycle along the path there. Just put some red in there. And the other side. Now this is on an old painting. Don't, even if you're not doing acrylics yet, or oils, uh, when you get enraged with your, your failures, don't throw them away. Keep them for, ooh, keep them for future use because you never know when you're going to take up some some painting with another medium 
No, I don't like that. No, that's not good. This is still a bit damp. I'll go back over that horizon, I think, for a minute. This is the stage where they're big. <laughs> this is where the gel's working against me because I want to crack on, but you can't paint wet over wet with this because it just drank the colour up from underneath. So let's look at that's a nice, nice ready colour down here. And just get that into the uh, surrounding trees there. Put some air in. You want to make the orange look orangey, more well, lighter. Don't have white, just add yellow. to put in some darks because the river is uh, we've got that, uh, that lovely sky. Well, will be lovely sky, I hope. Right. Let's uh, get some shadow in there. More reflections. Shut the window. Uh, hope you heard that. Every day. Come on, so let's just talk yappy dogs out. I'm not a dog lover. Uh, well, it's not the dogs, is it? It's the people. I'm going to go back in the sky now and start to model. I've used a brown and blue. We'll add a little bit of white with some of that now, just to just to lighten that a bit. Need a bit of gel now. with this lovely gel. Put a bit of variety in. time of the day when the old finger starts to cramp. Sort of trying to lighten some of that there, a bit of white, a bit of blue, uh, and we can get some light around those breaks in the sky. Just 
It's getting a bit of variety in as well. Yeah, I quite like that. That's coming on. Amazing, isn't it? Just cap him yellow. Bit of white. Touch of red with that orange. Ooh, touches. The cad really red in here in this mix is very very um, saturated and it's only a Wilco cover colour. Right, let's just mix in a little bit of a bit of Clouds coming in. Right, let's get some uh, some of that light through there. I think a bit of red with that uh, mix, and we can go into that with some some dark. But it needs to be light enough. The background needs to be light enough so so you can show some counter change. Remember always light light against dark. I might put in some some trunks on this, or I might not. If I do, it'd be to to make it obvious that they're trees. Maybe put a couple of figures. I did did one like this the other the other day. That's showing the tree. Yeah, it's coming up. We got some dark shadow, shadowy green in along here. So black, usual, black, yellow, red. So it becomes a dark green rather than a, a black. I think these things don't take too long, but you're sort of making it up as you go along, you're improvising, adjusting. So it's just over there, kind of. Now, this is taking a little bit of dry brush now. Right, go back with that dark green on the other side. But I'll use a bit of a uh, bit of orange in that mix. Yeah, get a nice dark green up here. In there. Oops. No, 
light, let's see if we can get some lighter greens now. Just touch it around there. orangey light to go on top of that. Very abstract expression. No, abstract impression. Oh, I left my brush in the juice there. That's a, if you leave your brushes in the water too long, it bends the bristles. So clean them and then dry them off and try to a towel or something. Just a bit of bit of um, shadow, a bit of lilac-y type shadow. Bit of shadow in the foreground there. Sort of complement the uh, the yellow. All right, let's lose some of this now Just by dragging dragging the cooler colours over. But I want to get this light in. To the water now. Now we've got some. I, I want to bring that that uh, orangey light through the painting, through the water. But I want to then go over it with the, the nice shadow reflection from the uh, from the sky. bit of blue on the horizon just to give a bit of distance in there. So we get some brilliance of that uh, light. Yellow, orange, not a white. I like that, that's sort of come come up quite well. Uh, but I want to, I've got to put some back in that so water. The G 
gel. Red and blue, that's what I'm using for this. just a bit too dark. So let's just go over with that so ready orange. It's probably the shape that's bugging me. Too, in, too, too silhouetted there with all that light, so it's a bit better. Uh, got a bit, I'm going to put a little bit of light back in there, I think, otherwise, there's just not enough air in it. Same here. Now that's drying off, we can just put our, our sunset colour back in here. the reflections down. Over there. I think I've gone almost as far as I can go on this. Put in a mount and we'll have a. I don't think I've made such a good job of that right hand bank because it's. it's uh, put this all that back. Just a nice bit of viridian and cad yellow. Light. It's catching. Do some of that, bring it into the trees. Right now, Rina, uh, and some light. See what happens. It's going to be too obvious there, I think. The 
great thing about doing this is that it it opens the then the uh, the thickness of the or the density of the trees out it puts some air into them. It also says trees in there. Just not white, just a, an off colour, an off white, like the colours I have been using. I do. Right, we'll put it in a mount, so we'll have a look at it. Comes past already. Where does time fly when you're enjoying yourself? I'm going to take, I'm going to have to have a clear up in here because I can't, I can't find anything. It's got, it's getting beyond. And I'm sure you are experiencing the same frustration. I put this double mount on. Uh, it's stuck. It's, it just fits. But it's a lovely mount. I made it. That's why. <coughs> Years ago, when, when I really got into painting, uh, I got hold of something that a woodcraft shop was selling. It was, um, it was a it was a piece of block board about four foot long. A couple of it had a straight edge, a beveled straight edge. A, a meter long, uh, two bolts, one each and open, well, one with a wing nut, so that, that would be my guide for my cutting. And I bought a Logan uh, Mounds cutter, which is absolutely superb for DIY work. Well, there we are. See. Um, and I could make all my own mounts. I think if I just lower it down, excuse my head. Ah, that'll probably collapse on me. That's better. That's that's more or less flat. I would normally, if I wasn't filming, I would normally paint these upright, vertical. But as it is, with a camera angle, it's better to have about 45 degrees. <coughs> I'd often put a brick underneath the back of my... My box is because sometimes it just collapses on me, but I'm uh, pretty, I'm quite pleased with that. It looks okay on the uh, in the mount. We call that sunset on the wonder. I think we bike down there every every day about eleven o'clock, so we never see a sunset. Never never ever been there. See a, see a sunset. Probably the sun's in the at the other the other side of the river. But there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.